Well, Shane is a very active, ambitious guy. Shane doesn't have an off switch. It's always go, 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 a hundred different ideas at once. So the first time I met Shane, I was actually on the phone. It kind of caught me off guard because he talks so fast. <laughs> okay, so this guy's certainly excited. He's certainly got a lot of passion. We're sitting in the milking parlor. We have eight, eight, it's called a double eight. It used to take about an hour to do 80 cows. I enjoyed it. I started working here, I think I was in grade three. And uh, it was different coming from Toronto, um, but I liked it because I was hands on. I used to sit right there when I was a little kid. I'd sit right here. <laughs> so we'd milk and I'd always sit right here. I think nowadays with farming, it is very competitive, very, very competitive to the point where now we're using other businesses to make, to farm. We like, it's very, you know, me not coming from a background of farming, I'm not coming from, uh, you know, I have a, my, my dad farms or my family farms, so it's all on me. You gotta make as much as you can off one acre and that's how you're getting paid. You're getting paid per acre, right? And the beans are only worth so much Corn is only worth so much, and same as wheat. Doing sweet corn, you can make a lot more money per acre. It's a lot more labor intensive, but you have to do a lot less acres. So you actually do really well, and I think I have a great location being on the highway. When Shane mentioned uh, his idea of uh, starting a little plot of sweet corn, I thought it was a great idea. Um, he needed to diversify as as well, and we had a you know a good fertile patch of soil there that would do great. The cash crop farming is, is high volume commodity. He just sells it to a grain elevator and then they sell it overseas or wherever it goes. The sweet corn is, is a lot more concentrated. It's a small area and it's directly to the consumer, which um, is, is actually really enjoyable. It's fun to meet people and actually talk to them about what you're growing. So last year, uh, we had uh, vegetables. We had about an acre, maybe 1.3 acres of sweet corn over on the top of the hill. So um, it worked out really well. I was really happy with it to, again, making more money per acre. And I like it because we have the great highway to sell the uh, products on. Just the sweet corn itself made the big dough. So we're going to start off with right here with the starter sweet corn. This will be the early sweet corn that's ready to harvest pretty much. And then on the other side of the far these barns, there's nine acres we're gonna start off with here and over there. So we have pretty much about 10 acres of sweet corn. I wanna try that with also doing my regular farming, right? Just to diversify and have extra cash coming in. You know, if I could make uh, you know, a couple grand off uh, at one acre, instead of leaving it in weeds, the way it is, it's, you know, it's more, you know, more productivity, right? Yeah, and it keeps me farming, right? That's the number one goal, right? Everyone, I want to farm, right? I didn't want to do nothing else. Like, I, when I was done high school, I, I didn't want to, you know, I was going to go to school for a mechanic or maybe work at Stoke or my stepdad worked. You know, I, I didn't want to do any of that stuff. I was like, screw that. I, I'd rather just do this. He came to me about when he was 15 and he said, Mom, I know what I want to do in life. I said, you do? He said, yes. What do you want to do, Shane? I don't want to go to college. I said, what do you want to do? I want to be a farmer. I said, a farmer? Are you sure? I, I, I just like the whole aspect of just working with your hands and seeing the beans come on the ground, running machinery, and every day is something different. I hate going to work in the same shit every day. I can't do it. You won't see me there long. <laughs> like,
He went to school now to learn how to to do the, the planting, how to mix the chemical, and he passes it, and I help him to buy his first tractor. We do the snow um, because, you know, with the farming, it's um, after the end of the year farming, you know, if you made 80 grand, let's say, um, and you went through $10,000 a month in bills and, you know, you got to live and groceries and stuff, um, you know, you'd be through fifty, sixty thousand $60,000 by spring. You'd only have 30 grand or 40 grand left. So I supplement all my tractors that I have and I put them on snow contracts in the city. And I've been doing that for about 10 years now. And it's, it's very good extra money. But what I started doing in the last five years now, I started branching out and advertising myself to do some, getting, getting some of the sites myself to make more money per Per site which means I can get more money per vehicle and and then result is I have more money in with less work fill time so I started last night at 12 o'clock and we went to Hamilton we filled up here filled the fuel up filled the salt up got the blades on we head to Hamilton and um, there was maybe a centimeter on the ground just enough to maybe grab with the front plows on the trucks, but not enough to plow with the tractors. So we had to salt everything, tidy up everything. So, um, yeah, I haven't slept in two days. It's okay though, I feel good. When we get those long snowstorms, he'll be out for three days straight and he won't come home and sleep and he'll just sleep in his truck. So, and then he'll like call me to stay awake. And I'm like, this is not sustainable. You can't keep this up. Like it's one thing when you're 25 and you have a bunch of friends that are able to do that kind of contract work, but not anymore. I'm tired of snow. This year has been hard on everybody. It's uh, probably the worst winter I've had. A lot of breakdowns, too many 20 centimeter snowfalls, price of fuel is starting to get too expensive. I've been thinking about sweet corn in the last couple of months. I got a lot of, the, lot of surprises this year. I got some different uh, new varieties I'm trying out. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm gonna do a lot more. I'm gonna probably do double what I did last year. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for some sweet corn. We've actually, we actually bought all the corn seeds already all bought. Everything's pretty much all bought. We just waiting for the winter to go away. Salt wrecks the hands. Gotta always have gloves. Salt wrecks everything. Yeah, it does. I have a trusty pail. Everything's super expensive. And it's inflated, but hopefully it'll come back down. But uh, for, for, for me anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm not crazy worried. But I am keeping, a, you know, just keeping an eye on it and, 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 and watching it, so yeah. The sidewalks are very particular. That's where all the lawsuits come from, and I'm the owner. And yeah, I got guys that could do it, but I, this is one of my high traffic sites. If I do it, I know that I did it right and that I'm happy with it and that if there's any issues, I'm the only one to blame. But I am excited. I am excited. Yeah, I keep going over there, but the door's always locked. I'm like, man, I kind of want to sit in it before I buy this thing. It's 70 grand. So, <laughs> like, like, but it looks nice. He finished finish work, and Nicole was somewhere around that area too, but she drove. So they were drove, driving back to her parents. For some reason, the cops followed Shane from River Road all the way down to King Street and called for backup make such a big thing at the parents' house, um, yelling after him, where do you get this money from buying this? He has this Ford truck. You know, do you sell, you sell drugs or whatever? You know, give, give the kid really a hard time, very hard time. He was about um, 18. I've had issues, you know, driving down the road with my, turp, my, uh, my box drill, 15 feet wide taking the shoulder and the road because it's 15 feet wide. I've been pulled over, harassed. I don't know, I don't know why. I don't know if they're pissed off at me. And uh, I, you know, um, it really bothered me, pissed me off a lot because 
and I see all the other bigger farmers going down the road doing the same thing. I mean, I always said to him, listen, just tell them, you know, you're not the only farmer that farms. There's a lot of farmers and where they're going to drive the tractors. Of course, it's on the road. So tell him not to give you any hard time, you know, because he's discriminating you like, where should you drive the tractor? You know, so sometimes we get really frustrated. And, you know, I said, just keep your head on your shoulder. I swear to God, I, I, I was running down the road on a Monday with a box where I was planting the field. And on a Tuesday, I was going back down the same road, Highway 6 with a hay wagon. He pulled me over again. Same cop, same guy. <laughs> like, and I don't know what it was. He, you know, I guess I was on the road holding up traffic. And sorry, I'm just going to the neighbor farm to get hay bales. Like a casual, casual racism that I didn't see before. And it actually, I didn't notice it until we had Willow. And then I noticed people making comments about Willow. So I actually thought he was making too big a deal of things until I had Willow, and then I became sensitive to it as well. And uh, I've had one instance when I was coming out of us, uh, um, you know, uh, Cuga there, and it was midnight, and uh, you know, I don't know if maybe the cop wasn't, uh, he didn't understand tractors, maybe, or not, you know, but he pulled me over. It was two in the morning. I was planting winter wheat, and I finished the field going home, and asked me. You know, if uh, he didn't know if the tractor was hot or something and uh, asked if uh, if I had uh, insurance or, or uh, you know, and I'm like, man, or, or ownership for it. I'm like, no, it's a tractor. It doesn't have that. I, I said, yeah. he's like, oh, I never seen, uh, like, never seen you around here before. I said, well, I am around here. So, you know, we have our, our awkward run-ins. We've had that. I don't know, it sounds stupid, I guess, but I like seeing the beans come out of the ground and I like seeing corn pop up in rows. And I think it's cool when they're small and I think it's cool at the end of the year how high they can get. Like, it's like you see the corn and it's like, oh, it's just this big. And then when you go to harvest it, it's, it's, it's you know, eight feet tall, right? <laughs>